Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome back to the troubleshooting series. Today we are with the sun. Now the sun is so important. It is the most important part of anybody's chart, I do believe, because the sun is the place from which you will give something of yourself to the world. Okay, that is what's making the sun so incredibly important. It's this place of creativity. You're here on earth to give something of yourself and you will get clues about what that is from your sun placement. Okay, because if we look at the sun in our sky, what is the sun doing? All the time, the sun is giving. It's giving light. It's giving life. It's giving energy. It's constantly, effortlessly giving all the time okay whether the world is you know facing the sun or not the sun is always on and it's always giving so this is so incredibly important to honor the sun to spend time with the sun to recognize and to study where is the sun in your chart because that's going to give you a lot of clues about what you're here to do all the other planets merely reflect the light of the sun but the sun is the one that generates and gives. It's, it's so incredibly important. As far as the planetary cabinet goes, the sun is the king. Okay, So in the moon episode, I'm sure I would have made mention that the moon is the queen. And now we are here with the king. And this got me thinking about a chessboard. And if you have a look at a game of chess, you will see across the duration of a game, the king doesn't move very much. He doesn't move very much at all. And when he does move, he moves maybe one square at a time, unless he gets to do one of those castling maneuvers where, you know, I think he gets to jump two places and the rook will move and one of those things. So, but there are very particular conditions as to when you're allowed to do that and, and all that kind of, you can only do it once. So you see the king doesn't have much movement at all. The queen on the other hand, on the chessboard, she can move in any direction. She can move as many squares as she wants to. She's got a huge amount of power. She's the most powerful one on the board, I do think. So the queen is pretty incredible and that is the moon. And when we look at the moon, and this is why in Vedic astrology it's so moon based, because the moon is the mind. And the mind does move a lot, just as the queen moves a lot on a chessboard. So, you know, and the moon, the queen has a lot to do, right? Whereas the king, he is pretty stationary, actually. He doesn't move too much at all. Uh, and equally, you know, when we look at all the planets and we contrast all the planets with the sun, so yes, they're reflecting light, and also they are moving and the sun isn't moving. So if we take a look at what constitutes a really strong sun, let's have a look. Uh, now, as I've been doing this across the series, I'll typically say something like, well, sun in Leo or sun in the fifth house as a quick example. But I'm actually gonna bring up the chart of Lee Kuan Yew because he's got such a terrific Leo kind of a chart and the other thing is that he embodies it I mean even without looking at the chart you can see it in his life he was the founding father of a nation okay so the father archetype belongs here with the son with the fifth house with Leo okay that is the father that's and, and so too is the ninth house as well really we read the father from the ninth house I know but uh, it's also the father archetype is also connected in here as well. So if we take a look at the chart of Lee Kuan Yew, you'll see that he's got uh, Leo Sun definitely, but it's being really expanded there by the presence of Rahu, and it's being very energized by Mars. Okay, a lot of drive, a lot of energy, a lot of ability to do things, and this is running on the 511 axis here with Ketu in the position of the fifth house, which is indicating lifetimes of past experience with the sun. Okay, so he's got a really strong sun energy. How can you identify if your sun is too strong or too weak? Let's take a look at the symptoms, just what, what is this, how does this manifest in real life? So 
with strong, really strong sun people, you will notice that they have to be creative. They must be creative. They are always creative. They're always coming up with something. They're always writing a screenplay or they're writing a song or there's always something being written in the workshop of their mind, you know, or they're, I have a friend, she's brilliant at uh, sewing. She's always sewing like a, a beautiful outfit or she's crocheting something or knitting something. She's just constantly making something. It's just amazing. Another thing about really strong energy is that you'll find that these people can be hard to get close to. Okay, and this is when like, you know, even in close friendships, when, you, when you're really close to someone, but particularly in dating and love and all that kind of thing. And we do have, this is Leo, the fifth house, this is romance, this is dating, this is all that kind of stuff. So what you will find is, say for example, if the sun is in the seventh house, you know, a spouse might find it hard to get really close to them, or they might feel like, God, there's only so far I can go, you know, and how I look at that, or how I think about that metaphorically is, wherever the sun is, it's like, how do you hug the sun? You know, how do you give the sun a hug? You can't, you'll get burnt, right? And you'll, just, you'll burn. So, you know, if the sun is in the seventh house, the partner will find it hard to get too close to, to their partner. Or even in the fifth house, you know, when you're dating someone, it might be hard to, to, to get the whole thing started kind of thing. Or if sun is in the first house, that person can also be quite a bit standalone and a little bit difficult to get close to. Another thing about a really strong sun is that these people can be quite um, like commanding. They're really in charge. They're visionaries. They're leaders. Okay, they're in charge. They might find it very difficult to outsource work because they want to do everything. They could be a bit of a control freak. I've got the words here, commanding, dictator, and narcissism. I don't know which of those words I'm going to put in the edit, but yeah, this person can be a bit of a dictator as well. Uh, you know, and I remember this from my days in advertising and working in certain film studios. Some of the directors I would work with, they, yeah, they were total dictators, but why not? I, I think that's great. You know, if it's your concept and you're the director and you get to make it, make it what you want. I, I, I don't have any problem with that uh, in a creative sense, right? I think that's fine. And, and, you know, that's what, when you're writing a book or a novel, you set the scene, you choose the characters, you choose everything, you choose every single little bit of it. And there's a lot of satisfaction that comes from that kind of creativity and, and creating a world and making something, you know, it's so much fun. I do have the word narcissism here and I will touch on it because I don't want to say that all Leo people are narcissists, that is not true, but uh, someone with very strong energy can be very used to getting their way and they can be, you know, they, they might just think as far as themselves. They might not be very good at empathy, okay? Because we've got Sun exalted in the first house there in Aries, right? So that's me, that's number one. I'm the only one that exists, right? So that can be a result of a really, really strong Sun. Now by contrast, we've got a weak Sun. And what are the symptoms of that? Well, it naturally follows, if we've just talked about narcissists, I'm naturally going to talk about an empath. Okay, so a person with a weak sun, say for example, a sun in the seventh house, this is a person who will be really good at understanding the needs of other people. And they, they've got a, a big light shining there in the seventh house. It's lit up so they can easily see the dynamics and patterns of other people. Okay, so who's an example of this? Well, Carl Jung is a brilliant example of this. Carl Jung, of course, a brilliant psychologist who has worked out so much about the human psyche. He's figured out so many things about patterns and dynamics in relationships and within ourselves and limiting beliefs and all that kind of wonderful stuff. He's figured out all this stuff. So he's figured that out because let's take a look at his D9. He's got sun debilitated there in the seventh house. Okay, so that's a very sunset sun. Okay, um, he's also got sun in the seventh house in D1. So we can see here seemingly a weak sun, 
but it's brilliantly positioned to light up the mind of the other person and he can see and figure things out there so you know great skills of empathy are there really an ability to understand other people really well um, a weak son could create a good follower so this is someone who's not necessarily a great leader you know we've got the great leader the exalted son in the first house but this is a person who might be quite good at following you know who might be quite good at being a team player and another thing about a weak son is that this person might not share their creativity they might find it hard to share things that they make they might have quite a creative impulse but they might feel uncomfortable about sharing it or they might not want to share it you know so this is the person <clears throat> who creates a lot of stuff but they don't they don't particularly want to share it or they don't feel the need to or you know they might be quite shy about sharing things or there might be something hidden about what they create or something like that so and I've got here the example being you know sun in Libra sun in the seventh house that kind of thing so what are my top tips for the sun to improve sun energy in your life well top tip number one is very simple and it is make something just make something just be creative just tap into your inner child make something that it, it, it just is fun for no other reason than for fun as well don't make something to make money make something that you just want to make for, for, for no reason at all maybe but it's just something within you do that you know so much of our lives are about making money or conforming or survival as well you know and, and dealing with limitations and boundaries and all that Saturnian kind of stuff but this is the Sun and this is the place of creativity and this should not be a place where money enters into anything it's like there is no money you know this is this is and this is also the place of you're a millionaire okay this is the place of total abundance this is the place of infinity as well so we've got the number one is here and we've got you know thousands or millions on the Saturnian side I've sometimes talked about this on the channel in other videos but this is also the home of infinity so this is the place where you are infinitely courageous you know it's that whole thing of well if you could do anything what would you do no limitations no boundaries make what you want make it happen create something make it another thing that I've got written here is that sometimes our physical illnesses are actually a result of blocked creativity and what a lot of authors have reported is that when they started writing their books certain physical illnesses just cleared up so if you've got certain physical ailments illnesses chronic fatigue uh, autoimmune any of these kind of things that doctors are baffled by and they send you away and they say oh, I don't know what to do with that you know they'll, they'll give it a fancy name but they won't be able to help you beyond that right if you have something like that going on and I have had uh, the way to solve that is to be creative you know be creative make something and it doesn't have to be for any reason it doesn't have to be for money but it has to embody something of your soul something within that just it has to come out okay so that's my top tip number one top tip number two okay I love this one take risks you have to be a risk taker with the energy of Leo this is the place of courage okay there's a lot of courage in here and I think the best well it, there are a couple of a couple of areas I was going to say the best place where this shows up I do think is in dating but it is I'm just looking at my notes now and I've also got these notes here I've got these two notes here which is number one you want to put your skin into the game okay and that's a thing of creativity actually 
and you, yeah you want to put your neck on the line so that's dating so let's take the first one first so you want to put some skin into the game okay so this is let's say you're writing a novel okay and you're writing a novel and what are you going to write about well ideally you give something of yourself okay you give something deep and personal that that you know and that means something to you put that into the work put some skin in the game and some family members might raise an eyebrow you know or they they might have something to say well have have courage and do it anyway right so this is we're in that leo territory of creativity of you know you you give um, what you have to give comedians always talk about this comedians always talk about how you know they'll make a joke about something and their wife was upset with it or something like that but see they had to give it and that was the gold that was the good stuff that was something really funny so they had to do it you see and I think they often end up marrying partners who are really understanding who just say yeah well if it's for your art go for it and I will be covering that in an upcoming Masters episode. I think something of that might get in the script. Now, the other one is you want to put your neck on the line. Okay, so I was thinking about this. You want to put your neck on the line. And this is a good one when it comes to the realm of dating. And I'll give you an example. I'll put some skin in the game and I'll give you an example of my life from about 20 years ago, a long time ago. And I was very young and sometimes I would go out for lunch my brother would bring some of his friends and what I would notice is sometimes my brother with my uh, brother's friends would say to him oh um, invite your sister you know she's nice invite your sister that kind of thing and I used to think hmm invite your sister I don't like this this whole thing very much but one of my brother's friends who met all of us at the same time he got I think well he got the number of our family and when he called our family for the first time, he asked for me. And I loved that because that was courage. That was courage. And time and time again, he actually, he demonstrated a lot of courage with me. And he would put his neck on the line where he's totally vulnerable. And he's totally vulnerable to rejection, to humiliation, to being laughed at. But he was courageous and time and time again he would step up and I, I used to be so impressed by this because I was like wow he's not like the others the others do this whole shady you know oh invite your sister kind of backdoor type way I didn't like any of that but I liked this I liked this guy who had courage who rang the house asked for me it was extraordinary because I was so young and you know not, that never happened to me before but it, it, I want to bring that up as an example because it's a good one because it's so simple it's someone putting their neck on the line of course then you know I moved to England and I met other people and people did a lot nicer things of, of putting their neck on the line etc but it's that thing of like when you ask someone out you do you put yourself on the line kind of thing and they can completely say no they can completely reject you or they can laugh at you and Caroline Mace talks about this she talks about how much effort some people will put into making their whole life in such a way that they never get laughed at and I actually think gosh that's that's a lot of work to maintain an ego you know uh, and, and I think one of the things about spiritual training is well we're always wanting to to break the ego down and experience true love you know because that's what love's about and that's here in the fifth house of romance and dating and, and love and all that kind of thing you got to let your pride go you know you got to let your ego go if you want to experience love because if we look at the David Hawkins scale the level of pride is 190 I'll bring it up on the screen the level of pride is something like 190 but courage and truth is at the level of 200 and that is the gateway to love from about I think it's 200 to 600 something like that that is the realm of love you know and it takes courage to go there you have to put your neck on the line 
you know, it's not easy. It's not easy. It's, it's really hard for some people. And it'd be hard for someone who's very mercurial or someone who overthinks or thinks too much. There's a lot of thinking going on. It's going to be quite difficult, right? Because you've got some things to break down. And the breakdown of that can be very painful. I know. I understand all this. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, let's have a look here. So take risks. Top tip two is is definitely take risks. I'm just checking the time. Oh my gosh, 20 minutes. Um, yeah. And I've got here in love and romance, the best example is asking someone out. It is. It's, it's, it's being direct. It's knocking on the front door of someone's life, being completely honest and, you know, saying, look, this is what I am. And, and top tip number, how, let's have a look. Top tip number four is the one where we're going to talk about plan to lose. We'll get there. We'll get there. But how about we, why don't we have a look at top tip three? This one might be a long one as well. How are we doing on time? Because I might have to, the battery's going to, anyway. Top tip three, get out of jail free. All right. This is an interesting one. This I'm going to have to explain, think about and explain at the same time because I have this vague idea I have an image in my mind. I'm going to bring it up. It is of the get out of jail free card. Do you remember that game Monopoly? And see, we are in the realm of games, okay? Fifth house, dating, romance, games, okay? Players, right? They're coming out of here too. And I was just talking about that in the previous top tip, but now we're talking about something different. This is this get out of jail free card, okay? This is for the people who have got Leo energy in their chart, or you've got some serious fifth house energy in your chart. If you have these, what you have in your possession is you have a get out of jail free card. Because this is the part of the chart where you go beyond. You go beyond all the barriers because light it just keeps going. It keeps going and going and going and going. It's infinite, it keeps going. Right? So when you are being creative, you actually kind of get to be God for a few moments. It's really incredible. This is why people are addicted to being creative. This is why people love to create. This is why, you know, everyone wants to be an artist and everyone's got a screenplay that they're writing. And, you know, I, I imagine if you go to California, isn't that everyone's writing a screenplay, something like that? You know, every, everyone's being creative. And why? It's because it's because for a few moments you get to be God and you get to be infinity. And this is your get out of jail free card. If you've got strong Leo placements or uh, fifth house, as I say, you basically have a get out of jail free card. It's, it's, it's you know, anytime you're in trouble, you can make something out of it. You can alchemize it. You can turn it into something. You've got this card that you can whip out. You can be creative, you can transform it, you can do something with it. That's what comedians are doing all the time. They're always alchemizing their bad experiences into humor, right? So I do think that if you've got Leo energy or you've got Fifth House, you, you actually have a get out of jail free card. That anytime you're in trouble, you just do your creative thing and somehow you're gonna alchemize the whole thing. I've got the note here that not even Saturn can contain you because you become light, you know. It's really amazing. This tip was actually going to be called laugh at yourself. I'll talk you through this one as well. So this is like my weird tip here, but laugh at yourself. So what do I mean by this? This is also the place where if you've got Leo energy and you go for an astrology reading, right? You can be amused by it. You can go, oh, wow, that's what someone thinks about me. You can be, oh, yes, yes, that's good. But do you know what? I'm going to blow the chart out of the water. I'm going to make something way more spectacular than whatever you just said about me. That's what a true Leo will do. A true Leo has attitude. Like a true Leo is just like, oh, is that what you think of me? Oh, okay. Well, that's nice. You know, and they, they might not say this to the astrologer's face, right? <laughs> but like they can take in, but they can take in the information that the astrologer is giving them, and they can be like, "Well, that's nice, but you know, 
I don't care. <laughs> like I'm, I'm just going to make something even better. You know, that's great. You know, you think that, but I'm going to do something even more amazing. So it's it's this. That's why I say it's the get out of jail free, or you know, you can't you go beyond. Uh, I've got the chart of Jet Li, and I wanted to bring this up because he's got this brilliant quote. And when I was doing the notes for this topic. Jet Li came up because there was a quote he said, he said, once you become very aware of yourself, it's almost a joke when someone tries to tell you about you. And that's Leo energy. And I remember this from when I was a young person. I, at university, I remember I did Maya Briggs test at university and I've done it subsequently in companies and every time I get the same result. And I remember being so devastated with my type. I was just like, oh no, I'm not that. Because it had feeling in there and I just thought, oh God, no, I'm not that. Now I love my type because, you know, it's the counselor type. I'm meant to be doing what I'm doing, right? So, but I remember just hating the whole thing. And I hated the whole thing because, because of this reason uh, and because of some of the sun energy in my chart, I hated anybody trying to put me in a box. I just thought, what a ridiculous thing. You can't put someone in a box. Now I use all of these tools all the time. It's so funny. I didn't know I was going to be using all these things. But um, yeah, it's, it's really interesting. So this is that get out of jail free or laugh at your chart or, you know, take the information from your chart and then be amused by it and go, do you know what? I'm going to go beyond. I'm going to do more than that. And I'm going to read Neville Goddard and I'm going to read all those law of attraction things that say, you know, work in the now moment. Because in the now moment, that's where you have all your power. And you can use law of attraction and all these things to, to go beyond. You really can. Top tip four, plan to lose. Okay, so in top tip number two, which was take risks, that's where you're risking something of yourself, maybe your pride, your ego, something like that, and you're trying for something and you genuinely don't know, is this going to work? Is this not going to work? All right? So top tip four, which I probably should have ran straight after top tip two, but I didn't think about that, <laughs> was, was is plan to lose. Now, what, what am I talking about here? So plan to lose. So you're aiming for the win. So make sure all of your thoughts are just about winning. I just want to win this thing and that's it. But I do think it's wise to have plans for the loss. What if you lose? What if it doesn't work out? You should have some plans. So for in the example of this dating type thing and you call someone and you ask them out or whatever. Okay, then what if they say no? Well, then you have a backup plan that, all right, well, I'll go out with my buddy. You know, he and I can just go to some bar and we'll have fun or whatever, whatever you do, right? I don't know. But it's that kind of thing. You want to have a, a backup plan there in, in case you lose, in case things don't work out. And that will actually give you more confidence when you're going for the win because you know what you're going to do if it doesn't work out. It will actually bring more courage and confidence to you, okay, if you have that backup plan in place. So that's really all that top tip four is about. And this is the reason that this top tip comes to mind, this plan to lose type thing. So you aim for the win, but you plan to lose. This comes to mind because the sun is connected with Saturn. Okay, you always read the line with astrology, you read the whole line wherever possible. And when you're reading the line of the sun, you're going to touch Saturnian energy. So it's important to plan for the loss. I do think that Saturn is a very strategic planet uh, as well. Sometimes I think Saturn doesn't get credit for being strategic. It really is. It really is about plan, structure, strategy, all that kind of thing. So plan for a loss. And the final top tip, which is top tip number five, is be yourself. Another really simple tip. But sometimes the most simple things are the most difficult to do. And this one's actually really difficult to do because if you study the realm of spirituality, you'll see that the whole thing is about 
knowing thyself. It's about breaking down the psyche, it's about breaking down consciousness, figuring it all out, seeing yourself clearly. And one of the things I mentioned in one of my pick a card readings one time was I talked about how you will never actually see yourself with your own eyes. So the best you might be able to do is look at a mirror, but a mirror will give you something like a nanosecond of delay. It's not the now. So when do you see yourself in the now moment? It's when you are with somebody else. In the now, their eyes are looking at you and they see you. You see, but you will never actually see your own self with your own eyes. Isn't that sometimes when I really dwell on this or when I really think about it, it can be quite trippy and it can be um, an interesting experience. But the truth is that relationships are the, the ultimate mirror of yourself. And the eyes of someone else, when they look at you, that's you seeing you, if you know what I mean. If you've studied a lot of Jiddu Krishnamurti, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about here. I was watching him last night and he talked about the fact that relationships are really, you know, it's the ultimate mirror of your own self. And this is all the spiritual teachings of know thyself and all that kind of thing. But for this tip, I was actually reflecting and thinking about a time when I was again in my early 20s, we're going back in time. I thought I'll put some skin in the game. Why not? I'll share something of myself and I'll share with you the fact that. So I always think that in your 20s, it's a great time to be experimental. And we do have the fifth house here of acting and actors. And I remember at university, I had to get up and give a presentation and it was awful. It was so bad. It was a real disaster and I was shaking like a leaf and oh my gosh, it was like the worst presentation ever given on the face of the planet. I did it and I thought, right, I've got to sort myself out. I have got to go to acting classes or something like that. So I'm all right talking in front of a camera, but I think if there were people here, I don't know, maybe I would be all shy. I have no idea. But um, I did acting classes and I chose to be at the, by the time you get to the mechanics two course, which like, so I did several courses and there's mechanics two, and I think it was eight weeks. And by the end of it, you have to deliver a monologue live on stage in front of lots of people. And I was terrified, but I did it. And I actually did an okay job. People liked it. I did a monologue of Rita from Educating Rita I learnt her lines and I learnt the monologue, the speech where she, she talks about how she's just kind of sick of the life around her and she wants to improve herself, she wants to change her life, she wants to sing a better song, that's how she describes it. And I related to that so strongly and I still do, I love Rita from that film, I think she's amazing. And I bring that up because this concept of be yourself. I actually think with Leo energy, it's quite fun to also be someone else. It's quite fun to experiment. It's also quite fun to act. It's quite fun to, you know, and you could think about this now, if you had to do a monologue of anyone in the world, who would you choose? Who would you want to be? Who would you want to, you know, recite their lines or whatever that is? And for me, it was definitely Rita. I would choose her again in a heartbeat. I love her character because all she wanted to do was improve herself and change her life and experience a better life. And, you know, she changed her name and she, what does she do in the film? She, and it's originally a, a screenplay. I think it's just a play that was on stage or something like that. But, you know, her whole life story is just about wanting to improve. But she gets there, it's funny, she changes her hairstyle and she changes her name and she can re recite poetry from memory and she ends up hanging out with all these cool Oxbridge kids and she does all of that. But she gets there and she discovers that, well, what I was seeking isn't there either, you know? And I relate to so much of that. I relate to chasing after dreams and getting there and kind of realizing, oh, that's not really here. 
You know, and I mean, that's really where she ends up at the end of the film. She ends up at the, the foot of the spiritual journey, you know, and I imagine that would be what she would embark on next kind of thing. But I like her adventures in the world and I like all the things that she went through. So, yeah, I like this top tip of be yourself, but equally experiment, be other people as well. And I'll just quickly, I know I'm going very long on this episode. This is terrible, but I'm just going to go for it. Why not? There was a guy I knew in England and, um, you know, every time you'd ask him, how are you? He'd always say, oh, not bad, not bad. And one day I found out that his favorite film was My Fair Lady. He loved that film, My Fair Lady. And um, I was watching it one time again with the family because we happen to love it here too. And um, I saw the Rex Harrison character when he was asked, how are you? He said, not bad. And I thought, oh, that's where he got it from. And I could see the parts of his own persona where he's kind of modeled himself on that Rex Harrison character. And I could see that because he loved that film. He used to talk about it. And yeah, I just thought, wow. I, yeah, I was able to make the connection and see what had influenced him. And I love doing that with artists. I love looking at their artwork and seeing oh wow, you were influenced by that person. Sometimes it's so obvious. You can see the musician that they were inspired by or, you know, I, I, I can definitely pick up on those things sometimes where I can, I can see direct influences. And I love stuff like that. I think we're all influenced by each other. And I love, you know, the, the quite difficult pathway of know thyself in, in the spiritual realm which is like climbing up a very steep and difficult mountain but equally I like just being in the, the regular world and be yourself but be someone else for a bit as well experiment have fun you know and play I think that's the ultimate so guys I hope you enjoyed this video I went a bit long this time it's the sun let's be extravagant you know that is one of the words with the sun it's it's very extravagant uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode today let me know how you got on with this episode in the comments below I absolutely love to hear from you and I look forward to seeing you next time